Okay, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's meeting for October 12th, 2022. It is 6 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting uh, on Zoom in the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the chapter 107 of the acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, chapter 30A, section 20 until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided, as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Um, the remote um, participation information can be found on the agenda, which is also found on the town website right around the calendar. There's a, uh, if you wanna participate by phone, you can dial in a 1-800 or toll-free number of 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570012. On the agenda, you'll see the Zoom link, which you can click on as well. So if you're on Zoom or if you're on your landline, just mute until you're ready to speak um, to state your name and where you're from. For people on landlines, it's star six to mute and unmute. So I'll call the meeting to order. Um, we've got a hearing at 6.15 and then um, we'll do some public comment first and then get into some other items. So any anybody wish to speak on the from the public? Jeff, yeah, come on up, state your name and. Welcome, it's good to see you. Thank you and good evening. Uh, Jeff Upton, Hillcrest Ave, South Deerfield here. And uh, I will try to do this as quickly as possible. Okay. And we had mentioned a couple of things in pertaining to uh, Tom Warrens coming yep. up. Uh, one, the library issue, um, I was thinking about the campus that people have been talking about in the buildings as far as the library, the church, and the old school slash senior center. Mm -hmm. And I've been putting a little thought into this, and I think there's a way that we could make all three buildings a lot more useful and efficient and uh, possibly at a reasonable expense. Mm -hmm. And to start off with, I would forgo the library grant and I would look at the library as far as a modest addition onto the library with a large community room, but attached to that, would be a single level senior center. That way the community room could be used by the library and the senior center. Uh, I know everybody wants their own area, but they do have uh, wall partitions that are motorized mm -hmm. and insulated. So they're soundproof and they run from floor to ceiling. And so if you had a very large group you could still pull off a nice meeting in that room. And at the same time, if the library had their needs for a meeting time, and it happened to be the same time with the senior center, you could divide that room and still be able to handle both. And I think that would reduce your cost for your building. As far as the church, I would convert the church, refurbish that into the uh, town hall, move the town hall into the church. What better way of getting full use of a beautiful building if you're gonna renovate it, to have your town hall in a historic building, if that's what you wanna call it. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, old elementary school slash senior center, if you're gonna be renovating that building, you're gonna need an elevator in there anyways and you're gonna need backup generator in that building. 
I would use that for senior housing. Look at one, maybe possibly two uh, bedroom apartments for the seniors. And that way seniors would have access, everything would be close, town hall, in the senior center with a library. And I think if you looked at that, you might find that you could reasonably uh, lower the price tag on all three buildings and you'd have them in full use. I know people have talked about, well, maybe we could use the church as a community center, uh, but how often are you gonna do that? And if you're gonna put that type of money into the building, why not be using it, utilize it as much as possible? And that's why I'm talking the the uh, new town hall offices, if we're going to be doing that, take that okay. step. So I think with those buildings in that situation, we could reduce the price tag uh, to the taxpayers. But Thank you. No obviously, comments. that would have to be, you know, looked at further. Sure. We're not supposed to respond, but mm -hmm. I just want to no, make a not. comment about the square footage when after you said what you said. I was thinking the square footage of the church might not be enough for our town hall. What well, if we flip, flip that, the 1888 building still be remain the town hall, but we put senior housing on one floor in the renovated historic church. Right. Uh, you know, that's, I think that's uh, some options. I think yeah. there's a little flexibility here. I do. I think I, I think yeah. there needs to be further discussion and really look at this. Uh, so we're we're not just locked into one project right now, pay for it, and then say, "Whoops, now what are we going to do here?" Because we don't have the money, mm -hmm. and that's that's my concern. With a with, even with the church, if if needed, you you may find that uh, you could use some storage in the old school, the elementary school, that's a pretty big building. So you could, you know, for record storage or whatever, I'm sure you could find some location and it's not that far away. So uh, actually, especially that's what when I was thinking of the, if we put senior housing on the first floor of the church, then you could build up, you know, record storage. Right. The top. Well, whatever. just, right. I know. It comes I, down to, nope, that's right. okay. I know it, we're... it just comes down to how many square I'm... feet you would need for each building and for what purpose. Yeah. And that's something I think you could work out. So thank you. I'm sorry to take up that right. much nope. time. You had another comment. You wanted yeah. To... The other, the other, and I have a, just a one page, just oh, a little great. over one page. I'll read it as quickly as I can. Go ahead. And I know the sewer issue, and I understand where everybody's coming from. So, uh, but I do have uh, some concerns about that. So I'll okay. read this as quickly as I can. Right. Sorry for not making eye contact. Okay. I am here tonight to express some concerns about articles 15 through 17 pertaining to the sewer system. The focus of my concerns has nothing to do with the people presently sitting on the committee acting the role of sewer commissioners, but the language contained in the proposed sewer articles themselves. As we all know, committee members change over the years and the original purpose and intent of an article can be lost when new members come on board, which then leaves the language open to interpretation. My major concern is the proposed change to the town rate payer, which includes septic system owners that do not have access to the sewer system. Uh, you, you'll find that in 150-10.5. The current bylaw allows for sewer costs to be covered by the town, in other words, everybody, at 25% in the sewer enterprise fund sewer user at 75%. The proposed bylaw would allow for a change from 25% up to 66 and two thirds percent for everyone in the balance for the enterprise fund sewer users. If this were to be implemented, it would raise the rates on the septic system owners, which I believe covers about two thirds of the town, which do not have access to the sewer system, some of which will never have <laughs> access in their lifetime. With $23 million already appropriated and a guess of another 23 million for the old Deerfield plant, in addition to updating the existing sewer infrastructure and trying to add additional sewer lines around town, this becomes a very expensive rate increase. 
Let us not forget that the septic system owners incur their own maintenance and replacement costs, easily running 25,000 up at today's cost. Due to a limited time, a few questions uh, to consider among many. What is the best guest total cost? I have it at about 45 million, not including existing sewer infrastructure upgrades and sewer line extensions around town. If these new articles were to pass and there was an increase for, from the current 25% for the town rate, how would the 23 million already appropriated and voted at 25% be treated? If a sewer line is added to a new area of town with septic system owners, will they be required to hook up to the town sewer system? If so, how soon does that have to be completed? Does that mean for someone that just replaced or upgraded their system, they would have to abandon it and still cover the cost? If septic owners are not required to hook up to the town sewer system, will, there still, will they still be charged with a betterment fee? As a septic owner, if sewer articles 15 through 17 do not remain at the current town rate of 25%, I will be a no vote. Again, these concerns are about the language in the articles and have nothing to do with the current or future committee members. And I thank you very much for your consideration, yeah. your time and consideration. Well, just I'll reply a little bit real quick. Um, just so that we have accurate info, the, um, we aren't increasing it to 60 something percent. The idea is to, um, well, one of the thoughts was to remove that barrier where the town must pay 25%, the taxpayer must pay 25%. Right, right now they, they must pay 25% general fund up and then up to two thirds. So that's the way it's written right now. And the idea is to remove that so the general taxpayer it's not on the system. Um, doesn't have to pay. Doesn't have to pay unless the town meeting votes to, or, or the select board or sewer commissioners, whoever they may be in the future, say a project comes online. We feel that the, the general fund or the town has a, a vested interest in it of 15%, right? Um, sewer users would pay the other percent. We'd have to take that to town meeting, all rate payers, all residents in the town would have to vote that amount, but it wouldn't be automatically increasing it to 63%, right. just, just to kind of clarify right. that. And then just let me run through a couple yep. more real quick. Um, anything that's done to date right now mm. stays the way it is. So the 25% that we're paying for the 20 million that we've borrowed already mm. stays 25, 75%. Okay. That, that doesn't, anything that has been done up to date doesn't change what we do going so it'd be treated as a 25 percent. Exactly. thank you yep for, for the life of these loans and this, mm. this project and if we took on a new project it would be you know that that would be up and i think for if i understand um betterments and stuff I, from my brief understanding it say we put a line on stillwater road or something like that um or wherever extended it some road mm -hmm. um i think that you, you're not forced to hook up then but i think you do have a betterment, betterment, or is a choice really. You'd have a betterment on on your your existing property, and I think that when a house sells or the septic fails, that's when you've got to hook in. Yeah, I, I think that's all in the regulations, and right. I don't think we've. You might want to check yet. with your bill inspector. I, of it, course, it may be three year a three year period. I've heard that someplace before. Yeah. So there would be a, a betterment fee, and and I apologize trying to rush in that. I did. That's okay. I did miss a little paragraph here. Yep. A two minute allotment does not allow for a very cohesive <laughs> expression of concerns <laughs> regarding the proposed language, right. which I understand is dependent on town meeting vote. Yep. But the people of Deerfield should not need to vote that rate division year after year. My concern is, is that that in the language, in that section of the language, it does allow for uh, you know, two thirds sure. to, to increase two now. thirds. 
and it would be awful nice not to have that yeah. two thirds there. Right. Cause if, you know, if, if there is right a, now. right. If there is a 25%, you know, then, mm -hmm. Hey, I could take another look at this language and say, you know, maybe this would work. Right. But with, with that two thirds in there as a septic owner, I, I struggle it's with a, it a little bit. That's there. already in there. The two it's thirds already, is in there in from there. 1935. Right. Yeah. So, but it does, it does leave possibly yeah. I made copies. Oh, Are you interested you. Yeah, in them? I appreciate it. Yes. I appreciate your, your thoughts. And you thank know. you very much yeah. for your time. I appreciate yeah, thank it. You. Jeff, could you give me a call tomorrow? All right. We have got a, we've got a, um, Trevor. Yeah, you just go. Anna Lee. Anna Lee, uh, quickly, we got to start a hearing. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, two things. First of all, I wanted to reiterate a clarification about the library grant um, that was stated at the Q&A a couple of weeks ago with the library. Um, there has been a misconception that uh, community space could not be available within the library if we utilize the grant. And in fact, the a representative from the library board stated that if the library um, board chooses to um, have community space and community activities at the library that that would certainly be allowed. Um, the other thing being that senior housing has certainly been working diligently for years to create adequate affordable senior housing and has really um, explored the opportunities within the church and definitely has found that to be not an adequate space for senior housing moving forward. So just want to mention that as we okay. go forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for the comment. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment before we start the hearing? Anybody have public comment? Seeing none at the no. moment. All right. So uh, the town of Deerfield um, Select Board Board of Health notice of public hearing, Mass General Law Chapter 148, Section 13. The Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing to consider an application for license pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 148, Section 13, made by uh, Julia Coffey uh, to store 4,000 gallons of propane on property located at 75 Stillwater Road, Assessor's Map 110, Lot 5 in South Deerfield. The hearing will be held on October 12th, 2022 at 6.15 p.m. A copy of the license application is available for inspection um, Monday through, through Thursday at the Select Board offices here at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Again, no, uh, meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation, all the same numbers and link are identical to our meeting, so we don't need to read that. So um, we'll invite um, Julia Coffey is here. Welcome. How are you? Very well. Good. Tell us about your project. And, oh, do I need a second to open the meeting? Have a second, please. No, just open well, the I'll Thank make you. a second. All right, all those in favor. Tim Hiltree, aye. Daniel, aye. Carolyn, that's aye. Great, be sure. How are you? I'm very well. Good. Uh, so I have submitted an application to store 4,000 gallons of propane at the site of my farm on Stillwater Road. Uh, I'm a year round mushroom farm and we utilize the propane for process steam uh, in our sterilization process and for general heating in our facility. Um, we have had 2,000 gallons of propane uh, on site uh, since the farm began operations uh, in South Deerfield in 2017. Okay, and you're finding you're just needing more at, the, at this time? No, actually, um, I was contacted in August by my propane provider, George Propane. Sure. Uh, they requested to come out and switch our tanks to, to from 1,000 gallon tank two 1,000 gallon tanks to two 2,000 gallon tanks. Okay. Um, I gave them the go ahead to do that. And they did that. Uh, the fire department came out and inspected and the fire chief was like, I think I might, there might be a licensing required. Right. I, nobody told me oh, before sure. the fact that there was any process involved. Gotcha. So uh, already there. Got yep. It. The okay. fire department uh, told me George Propane should have known and informed me. Yeah. Uh, and, and however, I found out after the fact. So um, I came down and filed that license application. And that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Um, I did see the note from the chief, um, uh, Bill Swayze, and he didn't see any issues on site other than obviously needing the license. Um, but he looked at, um, at that. And um, I would love to take 
Any comment? Any comments from the board or any public would like to speak? Is there anybody? Neighbors have any concern? No? You got a thumbs up? Um, geez, any other comments any on it at all? No. As long as it's safe when it's Yeah, uh, Chief thinks it's fine. Um, I don't see it. What, what side of the building are they on? Are they in the back? Or They're in the south side of the building. They're set pretty far back okay, from the good. road. It's hard yeah. to see. Yep. Or it doesn't look any different at this right. point. Yep. So I just have a couple of quick questions. Um, so they were located where the old the old tanks used to be, mm -hmm. and they're set on cement. They have it, a footing. It has a footing. Yeah, and so they're located very relatively close together, it, so that they can feed into the same. Right. Yeah. They're they're probably about ten feet on center apart or so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I aside from the 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 confusion about the licensing application i don't see any issues with the with nope. this I don't either. and there was no no further requirement that you found out when you when you you didn't find out like the planning board had to be involved or any of that it's just a, a license yeah. straight licensing issue yep yeah i came uh, well the fire chief checked on it yep told me to come down and talk to the select board yeah she pulled the form perfect so here we are yeah Good. <laughs> well I, um i don't have any any other questions no yeah I don't, I don't, I don't think Bill and I, I think, yeah, they're good. You're good, mm -hmm. Alex? Okay, great. Any other comments online? If not, I'll take a motion to close I'll, the hearing. I will make a motion to close the hearing. And I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Sure, make an annual aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I'll take a motion to approve the license. I'll make, I'll make that, that motion. motion. Oh, sorry, Tim, go ahead. I'll second it. All right, um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you for coming Thank down you. and taking Thank care of that. You. We'll get all the yes. stuff signed and care taken care of for you. Okay. Thank you so much. So one of us signs here. We'll do that later. Okay. Well, that's that. Great. Um, <clears throat> so any uh, select board announcements? Tell us how you trip mine. Uh, oh yeah well it's nice to be home it is good to be home i i just area. want to say thank you to the uh seniors for inviting us to their senior um spaghetti dinner tonight yep, triad did a great job over there yeah it looked beautiful it's still festive it is really nice and um looking over the minutes i just uh, the veterans day um 5k and 10k race that john reno had um proposed to us mm -hmm. in the um August minutes or the 27th minutes of July. I um, would like to see if we could hold, make sure that there was some notice in the, about the race in his memory. But that's a different Reno though, isn't, isn't it? it? Is I it? almost think it's a different Reno. Is it? I, I, I hope so then. I hope so too. I saw that too. And I was like, I it, maybe it's a son. I don't know. I don't Cause know. I thought the guy that came was younger, right? Uh, I thought that was Before. his dad. Oh, maybe. Maybe yeah. it is. I don't know. Well, let's find out. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Yes. I, I was like, oh. I know. He's, he's so been, John Reno he's passed been, away as a, a, a right, and he and he's been supporting community. the race for years. Yeah. I mean, I, as long as I can remember. Anyway. Okay. So well, that's um. Uh, yeah, news to me. So thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to mm -hmm. bring that up. And then Alex just. Uh, there was a mess. There was a a, a date change on. On July 27th, minutes say, are we doing minutes? Is that what we're no, doing? No, no, we got to do the Board of Health. Oh, thing okay. First. Well, we'll get back to that then. Mm -hmm. the date on that. Yeah, no, and I also just want to mention that um, I'm not sure which hat I was wearing when we did this, but um, we have uh, secure or finished an application for um, and a study to be done for geothermal throughout the campus that we talked about earlier. And uh, the initial phase is for up to $275,000. And uh, if we're accepted into that, it would design and basically do all the calculations necessary to both heat and cool all of the four buildings that we're talking about, the library, the church, the 1888 former uh, school senior center, and the town hall and police department, with also an option for heating um, any senior housing that can be developed in the campus area. Second phase, if you get accepted to the first phase, 
the likelihood is good that you could get accepted to the second phase, which would um, make us eligible for up to $2.5 million in actual construction money from the Department of Energy. They're looking to encourage geothermal use in municipal settings because it's uh, more environmentally friendly. And uh, we certainly have a, a good a good story to tell. So we just wanted to okay. let folks know about that. I, I, I wanna thank you, Tim, because that was a lot of work. It was a short deadline and it will be very impactful. And I agree, we have a wonderful story to tell of our campus and how amazing to take the heating and cooling costs off of all these projects that we wanna do. I mean, it'll be huge. And hopefully we can do the parking, landscaping and parking with that grant that we got, the neighborhood grant. So that's not eligible costs from the library's point of view, and that would be covered by a, another grant. So that would be very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Tim. Yeah. Anything else? Or do you want to hit the Board of Health stuff? Um, some exciting I, things coming up. Well, Alex, I want Alex to sum, summarize for us all the stuff that we have going on because we've our Nate, we finally got our check from NACHO, the National Association of County and City Health Officers. Mm -hmm. There are $35,000 to do outreach and some more COVID kind of stuff, which is great. Um, but we have our um, both of our grants, our public health grants, which is multi-year, $300,000 a year that we're part of the consortium. So mm -hmm. that's two $300,000 a year grants. Great. It will have eventually huge impact. And that con second grant, we just signed a contract this past week, apparently. Um, I got an email notice with Greenfield that you know the contract was signed by mm -hmm. Greenfield, so which is the lead community. So we have no overhead expenses, but we are benefiting from $300,000 a year two times $300,000 mm -hmm. a year for five or six years, which Great. is huge. So it's gonna be capacity building. And I wanted Alex to talk about that. But I also wanna just talk about real quickly that um, we have the upcoming um, October 22nd flu clinic and COVID bivariant. You can get regular COVID bivariant and flu shots all at the same time, uh, drive through nine in the morning, we've extended again, nine in the morning to one in the afternoon, the highway garage. And we really want people to come forward. I am really, really pleased. We had success September 30th. We had um, 108 um, um, high dose flu go through at the senior center. And um, it was very successfully done. And then we had, what was it, 280? 281 of the COVID. 281 at the um, elementary school by variant um, boosters done. We would have had more. I went very proud of our community. We asked people to sign up. We got the 250 people signed up and what they put down as a preference. So that it was supposed to trigger 10, um, you know, vaccinators. Only four showed up. This is through the state you know, DPH, Vax bus contractors. It is so frustrating, it's unbelievable. So, and, and it's frustrating because people did what we wanted them to do is to and sign then up. Had to wait. And then we had to wait. And we just can't do that. And I, I am saying that we're gonna put on uh, a warrant article for Springtown meeting for some amount that we need to, so we can have purchasing ability for our own vaccine. Alex has filed all the paperwork so we, you know, we can get reimbursed. It's $55 reimbursement for like a $20 mm -hmm. um, vaccine. So we need just seed money and then we can run this ourselves. It's so frustrating. Everybody wants to use a vendor now and it, it just, it's, it's so annoying. We spend all our time, you know, confirming and reconfirming and, you know, backing out and then, you know, changing vendors and it's just, is not worth it. And we're, worth we it. have our act together down here. We have our ability to do this. Let's build up our revolving fund and use it. I'm, I'm not yeah. hesitant. We've done this before oh, yeah. and we can do it. And if and it, the FERCOG just doesn't seem like they're gonna step up, do any kind of vaccine management. They wanna use vendors, that's fine, but we're not, we need to end it. 
-hmm. we need to take care of this ourselves. So sorry, I'm on a trade. I, it's <laughs> only because I'm so proud of our community. Our, our community yeah. steps up to the plate. We have a high vaccination rate. We have almost nine, you know, in the 90 percentiles. We, I don't, you know, because of the zip code issue, they say we have over 95%. I'm not quite sure if that's true, but we have a very high percentage, there's mm -hmm. no question. And people are paying attention. COVID is still here. It's important Brandon. to use the mask when you're in public places. So I'll let Alex talk now because I don't, you know, Anything I sound like say, Alex. I, sound <laughs> I was gonna say, I think, I think Carolyn, you, you, you did a fantastic job. I think, I think I'm good. Thank you. Thank right. you. Well, we have wastewater. Our wastewater numbers are very high. So that means yeah. it doesn't tell us how many people are infected because it's sh the shedding is in such different levels. You can't say how many people in the community are infected, but the levels are very high. So we have to pay attention. We did just we, have to pay attention. Alex, did we get an answer on why that last test was? I, I saw the yes. back that they were going to retest. Yes. So um, I actually got a, a phone call and they uh, said that there was a technical issue on their side yeah. with the company. Um, and I th think they just resent out the they just uh, sent out the um, the updated um, sample and it okay. does look like where it should be. Okay. And so it is detecting the level and whatnot, but they don't they haven't determined what happened. Nothing with yeah. the sample. So I was just like, can we just resample that then? <laughs> so. Okay, good. That sounds good. And Alex, can you tell me, um, I saw a, a news announcement today that both Pfizer and Moderna have been approved for like five and a half and six year olds. That's correct. Bivalent. That's correct. Yes. Is that effective immediately, do you know? That is effective immediately. Yes. Yep. Well, DPH has to approve it themselves, which is a lag of usually a couple of days. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of standard. By our, yeah. next, by our next vaccine, yes. young younger children can be vaccinated. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. And what is irritating again about these vendors? There's a short nationwide shortage of Moderna, and so instead of telling us that a Moderna, they were only going to bring X number of doses of Moderna. I have forgotten what it was. Like one hundred and fifty. 150. They let people sign up for Moderna. So a handful of people waited in line, at least a handful that I'm aware of, yeah. waited in line. Yeah. So 35 people, 35 people signed in, checked in, and then they left. And uh, about uh, two, thir two thirds of those individuals were all Moderna signups. So. And, and so again, they knew people had signed up. We could have told them at the beginning of the, when they came. Sitting around. They right. Have them sit through line. It's so frustrating. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, Tolly, Tolly, yeah. I mean, Tolly and I were informed like, what was it, like an hour left, you know, um, before the, the, you know, at 6 p.m. or even 6 30 or something. We're like, wait, what? What do you mean? So. Oh, and that's the other thing. They didn't bring anybody to do the, the, registration like they're supposed to they won't so fortunately alex and tolly stark were there and were color trained and were able to do the access the computer system you know they had their sign-ins they had their so passwords if you weren't signed up, they weren't they yeah because of, of course yeah. so tolly and i signed signed i think we signed up 55 people walk-ins so wow. everyone else signed up pretty much <laughs> my question is what are we doing to mitigate all that for the 22nd so i am uh you know actively working with the um with the vendor walgreens and and with the healthcare supervisor um as well and just making sure that we have um the the the, the numbers for the vaccinators and whatnot um so far i have received a confirmation of six vaccinators uh, but the more the merrier, I think. And I, I just want to make sure that we can try to get as many people vaccinated through the drive through within, um, what is it, three hour, uh, mm -hmm. four hour window. So um, it's, so the flu I, I'm, so I'm meeting, I'm meeting with them um, on Friday virtually and, and maybe Carolyn, you can join me or, or Trevor or, you know, whomever. Um, and, and we're just going to have a, 
pretty much a meeting of like, this is what we are expecting. This is what we really need. Mm -hmm. This is based on our needs assessment of all previous vaccines, based on our evaluation reports from the volunteers, from the community members, from the board, from the EDS team, from you know everyone. So all stakeholders involved, and we're just saying, listen, this this is what has worked at the DPW garage clinic, and I just want to go over that uh, with them, and ju and just try to facilitate that process when it comes to planning and implementation. So we, I think it's going to be okay. And we okay. want to encourage people to sign up because if they sign up, then we will have the ability to make sure the vaccine Demand is the, there. Yeah, if we have the numbers. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think we have 46 people signed up. And Trevor, you posted that yesterday or yeah. Monday, right? Yeah. Uh, that's unbelievable. Yep. So Our community's great. So great. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, moving on. The um, We have minutes. Yay. Thank you all. Thank you, um, Alex, very much. Yes. We got to fix one thing. So the first one is uh, is July 27th. Right. I'm not sure since I think it's just a typo. So I, even though it's not on our agenda as one of the ones listed, it was July 7th. And it's right. Just it should be 27. And I then, think it's still okay for us to vote. Right. And then the t and then the the notice on top of the um, things say July 13th. So that just needs to get fixed on the header. Yeah. It's all right. It's, it's and then minor stuff. And then um, I just want to add to the August third note. Um, I know that I asked for a thank you to John Pachoric, Chief John Pachoric, because he had put so much work into organizing our emergency management meeting that night, mm -hmm. and has followed through on the action plan. Yeah, I saw that. And you know, it just said action items, and I mean, it doesn't really. So we're oh under action items. Yeah, that's what it, you want? it doesn't really get into all the things that um, he actually did, and I just want to make sure that there's actually just an, a, a footnote saying thank you to Chief John Pachorik. Okay. So because I know I said that because I was so impressed with all the stuff that he all presented, right. um, and I think that was the only correction that I wanted to add to all the minutes that Alex had done. All right, so let's see. I'll uh, take a motion to approve the minutes of July 27th. Um, I will make that motion. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Any further discussions? All those in favor with the changes noted? Tim Hilchey, aye. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. Great. And then um, August 3rd. August 3rd. You make a motion for that? I'll make that motion. And with the amendment uh, to thank John Chief John Pachuk yep. yeah, and I'll for his work. It. Yep. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Now, August 10th. Um, I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. August 17th. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then um, let's see, August 18th. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Yeah. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, let's see, August 24th. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, let's see, we've got August, August 29th. 29th. Yep, I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Are we thinking on September 7th? I'll Sep make that motion. September 7th, okay, go ahead. Second that. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Then we've got September 19th. 19th. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We've got... Um, 24, 21st, I mean. 21st, September 21st. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then we have... 28th. Uh, the 28th, September 28th. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, Carolyn Ness, aye. 
Yay. Thank you so much. I really thank appreciate you, all Alex. that work. I uh, so welcome, much. and thank you. You didn't have to get through them, but thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. No. Yeah. Oh, it really feels important. so good to get, get them yeah, done. Yeah, it does. Um, the next item is our uh, warrant for the for the 2022 20, uh, state election um, for discussion items. So we, we have the warrant. This is the election warrant, and we just need to vote this, I believe, right? So we have all the people up for election. Then we have a couple questions on here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we'll get to signing those after. And then. Trevor, do you have the signature file? I do. Okay. I yep. think there's, yeah, there's several copies of that. Yeah. So we'll sign this. Is there just, is it just one signature? Oh, no, there's three. Okay, good. We'll do three. Right. So I'll get posted around town. Yes, there are a couple more coming. Have we have we reviewed where we post them by the way lately? Uh, I know Sharon went and posted these um, you know, our more uh, recently, and I think she had that discussion with you know, with um, cousins. So oh, okay. I'm pretty sure that was that. Just wanted to make sure we were um, reviewed that once in a while. Yeah. And then we have the permit. Okay. That's your... okay. okay. Casey, do you know who signs the um, license? Which one? For the, uh, for the um, propane tanks. tanks. There is a separate folder out there yeah, um, for the storage, the fuel storage. There's only one spot for signature of license. Right. You only have one spot. Oh, okay. That license has always been that way. So is it just the chair that signs or? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if we all do or. All right, those are done. Um, we have got a uh, special town meeting warrant and motions to go over. Fun part. Trevor. Yes, please. Julie's here as well. She may want to chime in. Those right. are very basic motions. I haven't sent them to anybody because I don't know where we're, all this is going to fall down, especially after Jeff Upton's comments. Um, but if Julie has any input, I know she was working on some information for next week's meeting, sort of as part of an information session. These are um, motions for the articles. Okay, so I'm going to right. take these out and just work on those. Uh, 
Okay. So, and then we'll kind of assign who's doing what, right? Generally. Well, um, I was going to ask you how you wanted to deal with the sign assigning the motions. Um, normally, I start out with the chair on the first motion, and usually sort of go through the list in order. Um, but I didn't know if there were specific things that you wanted to tackle. The other thing I didn't know is, do you want to ask the library to move the library article? Yeah, I think that's only fair. I mean, it's yeah. to work on it for sure. Okay. Um, I mean, unless anyone else has an objection on that, have the library move the library. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, the library yep. should move the library. So we'll have a trustee or somebody move the library article. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then, um, so we have the first article is the um, 60,000 from free cash to the contracted services. Yep. Uh, technical assistance. And we're going to have to do a little explanation on that. Yep. Because as you know, I had mentioned it to you guys, the finance committee didn't like how that article was crafted. Right. Um, we can do that. And they are meeting on the 21st okay. to go over the warrant again. Great. Uh, so I think we I think the talking points have to outline it pretty much what I talked to them about and what you the three of you and I have talked about, which is splitting those two things. Could could you what time are they meeting on the 21st? I don't know yet. Um, can you post that as a select board meeting just in case? I think you were going to, right? Or you did? Oh, just no, in case CIPC we wanted to see what, what uh, you were doing. Uh, I just want to make sure if we need to comment, we can show up and comment. And so that's the uh, Friday the 20, 21st? Okay. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure it's okay if we have to, if we want to. I'm not well, you have to post if you're going to show up at a meeting, the three of you. Okay. So we'll just post a separate meeting. Questions or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, um, because if you have to, if you want to discuss something as a group, you have to be posted. Well, yep. yeah, I just in case we're still talking about some of these. Yeah, things. no, no, that makes that makes sense. Okay. So I just wrote myself a note. It's at four thirty. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anybody want to take Article One? Just to get it going. Uh, or do you want me to assign it, and you guys can talk it, talk about it again next week? You can all take the hot potato. I'll uh, just just assign it and then see. That's yeah, I, I just thought you were going to do Trevor, Carol, and Tim. Trevor. Yeah, that's usually how I do it. I hadn't done it that way. Why don't I assign it and then we'll circle back around next week with final motions. Okay. Um, usually I would start with, and if there's something I think that you guys, or if there's a particular select board member that might want to take it, sometimes yep. I'll go out of order and do that. That's fine. Um, I'll probably take the 350th. Okay. I was figuring you would. Yeah. And I might be interested in Article 15 because I think a lot of people are confused about what it's asking to do. Sure. Yeah. Um, to Casey, did you get that? I'm just writing. So it's Article 15 you want to do? That's Tim wants to do that. Tim? Yep. Okay. Um, Do you want to stick with them or do you want me to do uh, 16 or we all share in the joy or yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I think we'll all probably share in that share on okay 16. so i'll take i'll take 16. i guess i'm i'm guess i'm gonna do 17 then yep so you're gonna do 17 carolyn oh, yeah yeah i guess so if it has to wiggle, I will let you. And by wiggle, I mean if we, if order sort of forces it when I start these, depending on because you guys have already chosen some of the articles, I may have to wiggle things around. But That's fine. That's um, fine. Yeah. Let's let's um, let's talk about the sewer ones for sure next week. I mean, all right. I don't well, you have a hearing next week, so you're going to want to talk about that one too, as yeah. you get further into your meeting. Because remember, you have the hearing on the bylaw. Yeah. The regs and the removal of chapter 236. Oh, okay. And we published the information. Um, I actually had a question from a resident today, and I want to clarify that if I could, because it does directly relate to the, the warrant. 
So the request to remove chapter 236 from the bylaws, mm -hmm. which would then be replaced by regulations promulgated by the sewer commissioners, right. um, would have to happen in a certain time frame. Correct. And we would have to be ready to, we would have to have gone through the review process, getting input from the engineers, and there's specific timelines for hearings involved. Right. Um, and we would have to do that if this passes at town meeting, we would have to do that within a 60 to 90 day period, which is the right. expectation to get a response from the attorney general's review of these bylaw changes. Right. Because right. I, uh, from, uh, from my understanding, the question to me was, you know, you can't really get a, get rid of it until you have something in its place. But I said, no, it, the 236 stays in place until the attorney general says right. we're good with this. And at that point, we're already ready to, to introduce exactly so you guys would be would have to be ready yeah. to approve the regulations going into place yep i'm good with that and i think i just wanted to make sure that the folks that are sitting in on the meeting understand that that's part of what we would do Correct. and again the way the article is written for removal of 236 it only goes into effect after it's been approved and we've received the response from the right. AG's office. Yep. So we're very aware of that timeline. And so the other point that this resident made was, well, you have to publish everything three weeks in advance. For regulations, that's true, not for the sewer bylaw. And I also wanna make it clear, we're treating this with the same notifi notification care as we would treat a zoning bylaw. Right. That is not required in the statute for a general bylaw, but we are taking that stance. Yeah. And we're doing it so that we can invite public comment and give people a chance to speak because we realize there are a lot of people with questions. Yep. And I said, Jeff Upton came into my office after, after he was done. And I said to him, you know, if you have public comment or you have things you wanna share and it's longer like that, you can certainly send us an email and we can take that into consideration because I do believe he's gonna be at the hearing next week. Yeah, yeah we, you know, I think for the hearing, I would, my guess is that I would take longer comments. It's yeah, you're you're gonna want to take longer comments, but you know, for for purposes of him speaking towards this article, I did remind him that there was a hearing next week. Yep, for sure. And I hope a lot of people come. So I do too. Right. Well, we want to explain it. Yeah, for sure. Seriously, um, our our intention, and we still have the ability to change some of this if um, necessary. If people I mean, because how you read it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so you'll, you'll do the, the you'll, um, uh, you know, assign these motions, we've got- I'll assign the rest of them. If there's something that you guys come up with meantime between probably now and Friday, let me know, cause I can, yep. I can make adjustments, but I really wanna be able to get this first round right. of motions out to council and the moderator, town yep. clerk, so that they can start reviewing them because we're gonna then have to pull together the meeting guide. Yep. Um, and generally I send this out to capital and finance too. I just wanna let everybody know that capital has a meeting tomorrow night. So mm -hmm. I'll be meeting with them to go over the requests. Yep. And is that, Casey, is that at 6 p.m.? I think it's at 5.30. 5.30, okay. Yeah, let me, I'll check while you guys are looking at this, we but. We have a 6.30 posted CCI meeting. Right. That's why I think Mark changed it to 5.30. Oh, okay. But let me check. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he changed it to 5.30. Okay. Because so Denise Mace and I are both on the CIPC and and we have the CCI meeting. I will read this uh, through here. So we have 60,000 for the um, contracted services, um, mostly engineering. We have... Um, 5,000 for um, staff for the select board office. Right. Um, we have uh, 20,000 for uh, paying off the interest accrued I, for the unemployment. Can I just ask, is that actually enough money, Casey? Yeah. So the estimate came back at 19.1. Right. So we um, Tim's suggestion was 20,000, which I think makes sense. That should cover it. Um, what we did, the calculation was done until November 30th. Um, so we should have enough money there, but if there was something we missed that if we appropriate 
20, we have a little bit of wiggle room there. And this includes fees and actual payments and interest. And it goes back quite a ways. I think if you look in your email, I sent you the estimate that Sarah Kimball gave me. I can send it again if folks want to look at it. No, I I just, I'm still trying to catch up on my email. I know what you mean. (laughs) No, it's fine. That's good. Um, Then we have 34,000 for um, Smith Folk Architect um, Agricultural High School for students. We've got that for transportation. Um, We have the 30,000 for the 350th, um, which is kind of buffer money that we're planning to have and hopefully not spend and just to roll back, but um, to cover any costs coming up um, that we have to pay for before all the donations come in um, and send out for deposits. And then we have the 40,000 for the uh, truck, which will go before capital tomorrow uh, for the wastewater treatment um, plant. They haven't had a truck for years and um, had been borrowing DPWs and that's all gone. And um, yeah, they just don't have the availability and we need to yeah. make sure that we're covering um, yeah, they, they can't have our bases with health and safety. Well, no, it's plant. a safety issue. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely a health and safety issue. So, and then we have 110,000 for the capital stabilization or from capital stabilization or question mark. Um, So that is the article related to the congregational church. And the reason it says uh, the board, we have to decide on the, on the amount. I thought Um, 10 wasn't accurate. I thought we were doing 150. I think we're closer with 150. The issue with this is um, it's until we really get into the building, it's an unknown. And and those of us that have actually trooped through that basement and seen some of the issues to the structural engineer, well, there's, there's, we know it's the great unknown, but without money, we can't even start. Well, so we have, we've are, we already have to set aside fifty thousand of what we appropriated last fall. So um, of us getting halfway through or three quarters of the way through, it exactly appropriate enough to get the job done. So exactly, and so I had put in. So what I did in the capital application, I revised it slightly and put plus or minus. Um, frankly. The board has to decide how much they want to request. Yes, I, I think the finance committee is going to be very interested in that number. I, um, at I, I, I feel comfortable, more comfortable with 150. I will change the amount for the CIPC okay. meeting. Right. So it says plus or minus, Carolyn, 110. We can certainly update them with this information tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yeah, I I, I would I feel more comfortable with 150. That's what I felt like that was. And do and that. also, I, Tim, since you seem to be have done so much with this, would you mind presenting this article? Um, which one is that? The, the this church. Is the church money. Um, I I'd be fine to. I mean, as it's worked out now, um, if you had Trevor, Carol, and Tim, Trevor, Carol, and Tim, you get your 350th, and I get my 15 sewer. Uh, yeah. So I, if Trevor is fine doing it, I'd, I'm fine doing it. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd oh, be that's fine. fine. Yeah, I just said somebody should be talking about the tr- trusses. Yeah, and you can do that. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean that's no problem. And yeah. I'll pull from people. Yeah. When you do. Okay. <clears throat> then eight is the um, money uh, for the subsidized senior housing. Do we have a dollar amount on that yet? We don't. Um, I Lily and I have been going back and forth. Um, she's not sure whether we still whether we need the money so we could end up passing it over okay um and she actually sent me an email today so i was waiting to hear back from her that's fine we can deal with that next week um nine is the rescinding the borrowing authority for the clarifier that we've already done which is a hundred thousand so we just get rid of that that'll pass with flying colors i'm sure (laughs) Maybe that's um, the one I want to do. That's the one you want to do. <laughs> Who gets nine? I do. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> um, let's see. Ten is to see if the town will vote um, for 45. Oh, this is a collective bargaining for the. Um, right. Yep. I have a correction I have to make on that one. I think I got interrupted in the middle of working on that particular right. article. <laughs> All right. so we'll I have to fix a couple words. Um, 11 is the TIF for the for new pro, which is fantastic. Yes. Good. Um, 12 is the land stuff. Did you wind up with 12? Yeah, Lyra. Oh, great. That's, That's why perfect. I said it. Yeah. it seemed to be perfectly lined up. Yeah. People have been working on these That's things. great. That's great. And 13 is also 
Well, I, I guess they're one and the same. I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to do both or not. But yeah, Tim should do both. Okay. Yeah, they're again. one and the same thing. So, um, and then we have fourteen, which is the um, extending the service availability for three police officers. Um, yes. Who wound up with that? What did you? Want? Well, Carolyn did. Carolyn's that got that. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's good. And then you were doing the fifteen, which is the. <laughs> Which is the, you know, and do we want to talk about that at all or wait till next week? I think it would wait till next week. Okay. Was there anything that, um, that we're hearing on that? Yeah, well, I mean, we had asked a question that was a legal question um, about where this language says through its select board acting as the sewer commissioners. And we had discussed um, having this say, through its sewer commissioners in case the select board and the sewer commissioners become separate at some point, then we wouldn't have an issue where. Yeah. So did we ever get any response from legal or did we just not haven't had time to ask the question? I thought we just said, let sleeping dogs lie, but I, I'm, I don't think we carry the way. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, I, I just, you know, um, if, if we leave it this way and it passes and then in some future date, the sewer, we'll sewer yeah. You and know, change and, the Bible. and it would be easy enough to do. It's right. just you know going through this process of having the legislature, you know, right. prove what you've already done. Because is that in the act? You mean? Yeah, it's oh, in the yes, act. it's in the act. So it might be. <clears throat> so if we just is through, if we just um, omitted the words "select board acting as" and said through its sewer commissioners, you know, but. This is why you know we wanted to ask. Yeah, that's a good question then. Uh, you know, it, yeah, Lisa, we have to go get it. A, a name done, a change <clears throat> down the road. Yeah, so I mean, currently it reflects the reality of the town. So it's not a huge issue, but it's something that if Lisa said, if you brought the question to Lisa Mead and she said, yeah, it probably makes sense to strike four words, then let's you know do that. But that makes sense. Yeah. But, we just need to answer the question before we have to finalize this and present does that make it. Sense so. to ask Lisa that question. <clears throat> it does, but I think there's so if you look in your packet, I gave you the entire packet of review information for the hearing for next week. Yes. Yeah. Um I think it's created that way in the leg the initial legislative act. <clears throat> so if you remove that, it may have you may have to make more changes to the legislative act. Well, that's what I was. That's what we were thinking. Um, I don't remember. I I haven't like I don't remember that word for word what the act says. Well, well it, it says, says pursuant to this, the act. This is section serve. three, right? Is that what you're reading? Section no, three? I'm section, section five. I'm re well, of the of the main acts, it's uh, in section three. It says the board of selectmen acting for and right. on behalf of said town uh, and I, I may was take just reading eminent domain. And we haven't requested that change You're right. there in might the bylaw in the warrant article because that, yeah. that wasn't a discussion before. Right. That doesn't mean we can't. It just means we have to. We would have to hold another town meeting. But yeah. This is a select board to serve as the board of sewer commissioners. As board of sewer commissioners will determine the operating budget, user fees, and the annual appropriation. Yeah, I don't have a strong feeling about it. I mean, I all thought right, I thought it. that the select board stuff was all supposed to be looked at and and then we did change board of selectmen to select board, but um <clears throat> right, but nobody considered separating the sewer commissioners from the select board, Tim. Right. But so section eight, uh, I, I don't have the whole thing. Yeah, you do. Oh I do. You okay. do. It's in the packet of information, which I think follows the motions in your packet. Yeah. I put the entire thing in there so that people could have a frame of reference because in the Warren article, we only take certain sections and the consideration for it, the sewer commissioners not to be the select board was not discussed. I, I get that. No, I get that yeah. completely. And so I we might just leave it the way it is. Yeah. I, I was yeah, just it's trying not to a, find... It's not a, enough to worry about. Um... Yeah. I don't see the but yeah, I've heard that question, not just from Jeff Upton. Okay, it's excerpt. You see it? It's it's the thing that says excerpt from special town meeting. Yeah, but it only goes to section five. And you get to section eight, and there's you know, there's other areas where it says selectmen. Wow. 
So, anyway. Why don't we just um, let the sleeping dogs lie again? Yeah. <laughs> just not worry about it at the moment. Like, but, you know, the act, if we're, if we're, take, if we're redoing the whole act, and we're changing select board in some areas and we don't touch section eight. I think the recommendation, and maybe I'm wrong, was, was the recommendation that we we drop everything after section five. Oh. No, because we want to appoint a clerk. <clears throat> All contracts should be made in the name of the town. Oh, I think there's some there's some stuff in there. So I guess you need to clarify if there's anything more. Um, if these were these were only the the parts of that were being changed. Right. The things in the warrant are only the parts that were discussed as being changed. Anything else wasn't discussed. Section three. So the text of 1935 Acts 343 is in your packet. Yes. Right. That's the entire text. But that's so what only. we put on the warrant was what was discussed beginning back in July. Well, all I'm saying is we talked about removing select men and putting in select board and select men is listed in section eight and, and nine and. Um, so section one changes, it says throughout change the oh, term okay. select men okay. to that's select under. board. All right, that's good. That's the first section of the excerpt from the Warren article. Yep. Okay, good. That's that's fine then. I'm done. So yeah, it was is the select board acting as the sewer commissioners. That's part of the enabling legislation, and that wasn't discussed as a as a non-starter or a change. Yeah, it was last minute, so it's okay. It's a conversation you have. Yep. Okay, let's move. All right, so that was that. I think that was everything, you know, other than having the library, right? That was um, the bylaw. And so, yeah, the li I will reach out to Candace and ask her to have one of the library commissioners step up and let me know who is going to be, or I can just put in library trustee. Um, but it may be that a certain person may want to do that. Right. Well, but, and, and so, um, I'm trying to think. I know that their chair of the trustees is not a resident of Deerfield, so they want, may want to be added to the welcome. You know what I mean? Who's going to speak? List of people who are going to speak on on the issues. Yep. Because if Nancy Maynard is going to be the one presenting the article, I'm guessing, but maybe not. But if she is, she'll have to be on the list of people that are. Yeah, is are allowed to speak. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I do have one thing I want to try and clarify that might help um, Bruce Upton. In, in 150.10.5, the final, the final pair, uh, sentence says, however, in the event the act is amended, and then this, provi uh, then this provision shall be no, of no further effect, and the act shall control. So does that mean that in the event that the, we do amend the act, that the whole 150-10.5 is gone or or just the uh the preceding sentence it's it's unclear to me the payment of the estimated I, th I think we should get that clarified by the lawyers because it, it, yeah. it does seem like it would cancel out it may mean that just that um, just the portion, <clears throat> let's see, <clears throat> beginning at pursuant to the act, the town meeting shall determine what portion shall be paid by the town and what portion shall be paid by the user. But in no event shall the town pay less than one quarter, which was in the original act, right. and not more than two thirds of the cost of any such improvements to the system or systems. Right. However, the original act. however, to the extent that, that the act is amended, blah. So, right. I think it. I think what this last sentence refers to is only up to the uh, the preceding sentence where it says pursuant to the act, and it doesn't take out the whole thing. So, <clears throat> Tra um, Tim, can you send me a an email yeah. about that so I can parse it because I'm still having trouble parsing it. Yeah. I'll do that when I get home. Okay, thank you. 
I want to be able to ask Lisa that question if we can ahead of time, because next week we have her for about a half hour. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Any anything else we want to go over on that? Any comments? Any comments? Let's talk tomorrow, and I will circle anything so we can get clarity. Okay. But you, that, that was another thing on my list as far as clarification. It's very confusing. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's in there in case one passes or doesn't pass, right? Right. If the act doesn't pass, it stays. If it, exactly. if it does pass, it goes yeah. away. A yep. lawyer needs to have clarification, really explain it yep. in layman's terms. It is. It's confusing for a lot of people. I agree. Um, for, I agree. I agree. And there's all kinds of, you know, things floating around in the in the, in the web of sphere, like everybody was going to get hit with a five thousand or a twenty five hundred dollar one time payment. I don't know where that came from, but what? Yeah, it was it was kind of a strange thing. Oh, Julie, Julie Julie's here hand and hand she's got her hand up. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Julie. I'm okay, but I had nothing to say about a one time five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came from. No, my question was just next week. You're going to have the hearing, the official public hearing on the sewer bylaw item. Are you then going to go through all of the warrant articles and have a presentation on them? We were going to go through the warrant articles. Um, I was actually going to send you an email after the meeting or tomorrow morning and see where you were, because I know you had some information you wanted to be able to present. So I was thinking maybe the board, we could, even if we went through each one of the articles with talking points, I think it makes sense for you to start that off because you've got right. some good financial information. I think people need to hear first. Okay. Yeah. That I mean, makes sense. That was my intention was Julie was going to go before we went, right? She was going to yeah. present. Okay. I mean, if, if you're <laughs> whatever you want, are you willing? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, sure. So what I have put together is just a few slides on town debt and library, a, a sort of different cases for library debt and how that would impact people's taxes. That's what I have prepared. And it's only about the library. It's not about anything else. Yep. Okay. Fine. Okay. Thanks, Julie. And Julie, just a quick question for you. Um, I, I looked at the, the documents that you have not finalized. Right. Uh, and I note that there is one scenario where um, CPA money would be applied to the old portion of the Tilton Library building um, up, up to a million dollar request. And um, that would yield, if, if we get the 3.9 grant, if we get 4.3 million in ARPA or some other funds, if CPA uses $1 million and all the other things stay the same, there's a scenario where the library is gonna cost the town 300,000. Yep. So, when we talk about that, I want I want people to understand that this could be a lot cheaper than perhaps the, the suggestion that Bruce brought to us tonight, which is forego the grant and then spend millions of dollars yeah. doing what he was suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's very confusing and there's a lot on this, this warrant, but Julie's done a great job in simplifying this and making it visual. So yeah. I just wanted to That's check helpful. if that one's going to be in that in that document that would be great verbally it will be presented verbally great. verbally verbally great yes great okie doke um so there is the of course other scenario that the 4.3 doesn't come through and yep. yeah okay yep. yeah and all of those all of those have numbers attached to them yes. the most expensive they ones. do the, the least expensive one and the one in the middle. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. I just don't want people to go away from this meeting saying, oh, the library is going to cost $300,000. No, 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 no. No. I just right. wanted. Okay. Yeah. The other things were all there. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, well, it doesn't. <laughs> the reason it's not presented visually is that all the other visual stuff is how much you would pay each year in taxes. And there would be no loan in that case. So there wouldn't be any annual um, loan debt service. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, it's just that in the unlikely event that that should occur, um, that would be a- If all the stars align perfectly then, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, let's see, and just, I guess, 
I don't need to read this, but this is the just the notices in here about our our um, sewer uh, hearing on October nineteenth at six p.m. here. Um, so please, please come. Uh, let's see. There is. What else do we have? Uh, the next item was uh, office staff support. Do you want to hit on that, Casey? Or is there? It says office staff support as in right. That was something Alex. I asked Alex earlier before the meeting started. So I'm, I just want. So as you know, further into your agenda, we received a resignation. Yeah. Um, Brenda and I have been working with several members of staff and the assistant treasurer collector to develop some sort of a working plan when Jen Wallace leaves, which is tomorrow, um, to supplement support for Sarah, because Sarah is essentially going to, she's, we'll have Carlene, who's the town clerk. She's not here all the time. Right. Um, we have elections coming up. There's a lot of moving parts in the office. So we're trying to figure out how to deploy staff so that we can support the, the critical need um, for elections, for receiving payments and stuff, for answering phones. But there's some places where um, we're gonna see if we can get a little help from offices that aren't normally you know, connected, but we're basically parceling things out. We're going to move the phones a certain way. Um, we've reassigned who's opening and closing the business or the the offices Monday through Thursday. So we're trying to make some thoughtful adjustments with people's comments so that we can try to meet everybody's needs. But frankly, this is going to be a stretch, and people need to understand that. I, I I'm, I'm really concerned and um, I would like us, um, I'm, I'm willing to make a motion that we just blow off the state and move forward with our hiring process because- It's already done. I already, I, I bit the bullet and did it, Carolyn, because okay. I, we couldn't really wait. Yeah. It's, it's, no. it's so thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, you know- I, don't, I mean, we filed legislation like nine months ago or 10 months Right. Ago. And so let me give you the update on that. So it's out of the House. The House approved it. It's into the Senate. And what I did, I've been checking in like every week. Um, I checked in with Cameron in Senator Comerford's office now that it's in the Senate. And I explained what happened. So they're going to try to push it. Um, meantime, I put a job out, a job vacancy for an interim treasure collector out because we just need the help. Yeah. Um, and we would do it in a similar manner as we hired Carlene as interim town clerk and, um, and then hire for permanent once we about, get I'm approval. About permanent, going ahead with the permanent, Casey. We can't, because the legislation, because the positions are created the way they're created, we have to wait until the legislature acts. Yeah, but what are they gonna do to us? What, my, my big fear is that we have an election in like less than a month. I know. And then all of a sudden, we don't have a governor to sign any legislation, and we've got to go back through and pass all this stuff. All governor over. is in place until the new governor takes office, Trevor. Well, we it's need, been nine we months. Need, yeah, but listen, I realize that, but the legislature refuses to act any faster. I cannot do anything about it. No, I'm not asking I you know, to. We're not asking you that. That's, and I'm not saying We're saying, saying that. let's ignore the state. Yes, that's what we I'm We can't saying. ignore the state. Why not? Because it's legally required, Trevor. You have to follow the rules you we created by getting a special legislative act. This is this is because it was created the way it was created. And this wasn't unusual in 1972. It's unusual now. Well, it's unusual that they take nine months to get their act together. Uh, and especially and I made that point very clearly. <laughs> I've also offered to talk to them. Struggling and, and people in Boston have multiple staff, all kinds of help, tons of money that it comes from the federal government and everybody's pocket is all sitting out there in Boston and there's no help coming That's to Western true. Massachusetts and our staff are in tears because they can't get any help because our Senate can't get to work and our house can't get to work and our government can't sign a paper to get us back to work. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing and it's a scandal. I don't yeah. know how this state runs. It's driving me crazy. 
I'm Trevor, just, I'm let me just be it. clear that hiring an interim treasurer collector, um, that was not a popular thing right away. And I pushed it because it's got to happen. We have to get some help in there. Now, we've already put the vacancy out for Jen Wallace's position, and we're starting to get applications in. And in the vacancy notice, I've said review begins immediately. So we're going to start looking at candidates. We don't have time to wait, and we know that. So, Casey, um, just to I realize what you're saying, but I can't do anything about what the state does. All I can remind you is legally we have to follow Casey, the path that was created. Chris they Laramie should... could maybe write an article. He could. Uh, we, we're already trying to get him to make scandals. Of <laughs> <laughs> See, Chris, it's all you. Where's the there money is coming? the money. You're spo this is supposed to be your big thing, Chris. How come you're not writing it? <laughs> Casey, just to clarify, um, we're the position you've advertised is the one that we would ultimately make um, final should we get approval and a signature from the state, right? So once we get final approval from the state and a signature from the governor, we would, unfortunately, the bylaw requires us to do a posting for any vacancy. Um, but we could certainly, if we hired somebody for interim treasure collector, that person could be considered for a permanent position. But one thing that we I have to reiterate to folks is legally, the only way we can do this is if we do it on a temporary contract basis. And- so Can we have two applicants out right now? Because we, obviously we have one for Jens and they have one for the other- Yeah, we have one for, we have two. We have two, okay. Good. Yes, sure you have two. That. Right, so, but the person who becomes the interim candidate would be on, an, in, on an inside track well, they could certainly be considered. We would want to be fair with everybody um, and transparent. But yes, if that person was interested in the permanent position, then I certainly would want them to apply and go through that process. Okay. Thank so you. the minute we find out we're going to move in that direction, um, finding some part time help is, is helpful. And we're lucky we have Alex. Alex has been. He's and so the other thing you should understand is Carlene and Brenda and I have also had these conversations as it relates to the elections. Yeah. Um, the elections requirements are onerous now. I know. And Severely. We but back. Carlene's developing a plan. We're gonna we're gonna have to figure out how we deploy and redeploy people. Um, the new assistant town administrator starts on the twenty fourth. And I'm in the middle of an email to tell him not to panic, but he's really gonna, to, he, it's gonna be an interesting day for him. Um, but once we get that person in, it's gonna be, we're gonna add a little, it'll split some of the workload. But the other thing that we frankly have to think about, and Brenda and I are, are in agreement that this has to happen, um, there may be times that we have to authorize overtime. And as long as we have some wiggle room in our budget, we may do that mm -hmm. in order to get things done. And there may be some people that are that can work an overtime question and other people that need to have flex time, and that's fine. Yep. Um, but is, we is need to be a, nimble on this. Is there an ability for the people that we hire to run the election, you know, the helpers, is can anybody support Carlene or- Sarah? Carlene's talking to them about that, yes. Okay. Because we have to have early voting yes. and we have to have availability during our normal office hours for yep. early voting. So a okay. turnstile is going to go out relatively yep. Yep. soon and somebody's got to be able to help those people. So, you know, Carlene's working on that to see if we okay. can get some volunteers from our normal elections people to help us with that. Ooh. Plus, we have to have we have to be open two Saturdays. And we're working on what that looks like. So she's working directly with some of the election workers to see if we can spill, fill those spaces. Okay. Well, let us know how we can help. You know, I will. And the pressure you're all under. And um, right. And that's why I feel like um, we just want to do maybe they can. won't legally be able to sign everything, but just going ahead and hiring the same, you know, a permanent person could be okay. At least somebody. We well, um, we can relitigate this whole question of interim and what's possible, but I don't think that's going to serve any purpose. Um, but one thing I would like to say is that the recent departures indicate to me that the staff here are overworked. And 
this problem can't be solved by continually hiring new people. And we really need to think about this from a, a holistic viewpoint. We need to hire the staff that's going to allow the staff to do the work they need to do and all the new work that's coming on without burnout because mm -hmm. the town can't function with people leaving every year and a half uh, because then you have a, a six month you know get up to speed kind of thing and people who are looking at uh, working for Deerfield seeing this happening are not going to want to come here so you're not going to get the best candidates unless we solve this problem and figure out what is the actual staffing level we need mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how we do that I think people have done studies before somebody mentioned to me a 2013 study which was really not a study about the staffing needs of the building it was right. really what is the authority the town administrator should have yep. so it, it didn't answer this question so no they didn't do a deployment they didn't do a planning study so when i mentioned the community compact several weeks ago this is actually part of an element of that Good. Um, is to figure out how to deploy personnel who do we really need what do we really need um, but also there's there's other elements included here and then Denise and Alice Rich Lewis and I had a meeting about this earlier today. So, you know, there, there's. We need to have some data, some background. But you're right, there's a capacity problem, there was a capacity problem when I walked through the door. Too. There's a capacity problem, there's a deployment question. And it's also a space issue. Like we do not have the space to hire certain positions. We just yep. don't have it. Um, and mm -hmm. even if we turned every other room into an office space, we still have to have meeting space because we don't have other spaces in other buildings. Right. So we're limited. And so this is when I say capacity, it's it's physical capacity, it's staff capacity, it's duties, you know, and and understand that. This is a very busy small town that's hitting the hitting the ceiling of of what it can do unless we make a significant change. Yep. And you know you've got there's there's planning elements in place. Um, there's discussions happening, but pulling the trigger on those things and getting them started um, is going to be critical. And so I have to thank you know Julie and. Um, Dan Pallotta working on the design um, for the 1888 building that's moving forward, although I haven't seen a contract yet, so I'm on the phone to Dan. That's actually an item unanticipated that I found out about this afternoon. I'm going to ask you guys a question, mm -hmm. um, but we can do it a little bit later. But essentially, Tim's right. You know, when people are coming in and leaving within two to five years, one, the younger workforce moves like that. But two, it indicates a larger problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's something leadership has got to take on and address. Because if there's too many things going on, we got to pair back. Yep. I agree with that. And, I think and so that's an element that we all have to think about. It's much harder. Because there's still support that happens when committees are doing a lot, a lot of work. It's a lot harder to run a town than it was even five or 10 years ago. Absolutely. The amount of work is just unbelievable. And so there's also an element of Brenda and I sort of talking through how we're going to start approaching the budget for next year, because we warned everybody when we made these changes with the, the different accounts and the town clerk and sort of planning for the split um, that we weren't sure what it was exactly going to look like. And we might have to refresh it and come back and say, OK, we need to adjust this this way. So input from our interim clerk is going to be very helpful. And one thing that I said in our meeting today was input from an interim treasure collector would also be helpful because new people that come into this often see things from a different perspective and they can give us sort of pointers about what we could do to, to improve service and deployment of staff. And so there's a there's a part of me that looks forward to to getting some feedback about that. We're already getting feedback from Carlene. Um, and I think we'll be in a better place when we have to hire permanently, but it's, it's, it's a change. It's a big change and folks are just, we have to figure out how to do it. But in the meantime, we need to not lose as many people because things are so busy in here. Mm -hmm. 
And just a further point on that, right now we are in a period where there are a lot of volunteers like yes. you doing things that really town employees should be doing. Um, you know, these budget figures, figures should have been calculated for the library by somebody here uh, months ago. Um, and, you know, if, if it weren't for people like Julie or Denise or, or other volunteers doing, <coughs> doing this work, um, mm -hmm. doesn't get done. Yeah, if, if two years from now people like these go away, then a lot of things don't happen in town. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we we definitely need to, I, I just backing you up. We definitely need to figure out how to get our hands around this. Right. We're in we're we're a small town that's got a lot of big city issues coming to it. And we need to figure out how we can make this work. And how we wrap our arms around it while being mindful of the fact that, you know, the just supporting the levy, like activities that exist right now mm -hmm. um there's there's an element that because i know that julie and the finance committee are also working on financial policies which eventually they're going to bring to you guys and some of the elements of those financial policies may require significant change and in how we budget in the first place so it's important that everybody understand that this is a progression and it can't happen overnight but we also, just from a management perspective, um, it makes sense for the managers in place to be able to pivot when they need to. And so that's what we did. It was sort of ask forgiveness as opposed to permission with the vacancies because we just, we don't have a choice, we have to do it. And that I took that on and waited for you guys to slap me on the other hand, I knew I had to do what was necessary so that we can fill these voids. Wow. And I have to say, staff has really stepped up. It's not easy for them to have me come to them and say, look, I need you to handle the phones for this, or I need you to open the office on a regular basis until we, until something changes and we get another person in here. Um, on the other hand, our existing staff are great and they are willing to help and they are you know, going out of their way to, try to try to get us to a reasonable plan and i have to thank them for that it's to their credit um do you have anything on the telecommuting or is that just a placeholder at the moment so the telecommuting there's one question that i asked council when i reviewed it again basically what it does is it outlines the the types of what telecommuting sort of means is remote work mm -hmm. um and it outlines who might be qualified, the circumstances that would qualify it. Um, it says you have to request it if you're an employee requesting it, but we also need to have an element of assignment. You know, if, if management needs to assign somebody to work remotely, we need to have that capability. Um, and so the policy is really designed to meet those needs. There's one thing that's in there that is an element of, of communication and that's a remote work or telecommuting agreement between the department head and town administrator and the employee so that you outline the expectations right. of what that means so those are the things you're going to see and there the the thing that i asked council was to help me develop an agreement so that when you guys go to look at this each exhibit that relates to it like a request an agreement is all there because I noticed that that element, that agreement was referenced, but it wasn't as it wasn't attached. So that's the reason you don't have it is because it wasn't attached. So I asked her for some help. I'm gonna put it forward again. I'm hoping I can get it by next week. Okay. Kate's got another one of her lawyers working on it to get me that agreement. So uh, next item would be to, um, to appoint the um, poll workers for the term beginning July 1st, 2022 and ending December 31st. 2022. So we, the select board of the town of Deerfield, by virtue of authority invested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby appoint as poll workers uh, John Carney, Maureen Casey, Byron uh, Coley, Lily Dwight, Kara Ike Richardson, David uh, Gilbert Key, John McKenzie, uh, Moira uh, 
McGeergy, uh, Deborah Pryor, Kathleen Steyer, and Kathleen Wotroba. I will make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then um, we have a, discussed this er earlier, but we want to regretfully accept the notice um, of, um, let's see, so let's see. So, uh, <clears throat> start again. Jen Wallace will be um, turning in a resignation. We re regretfully accept that resignation. Their last day will be um, Thursday, October 13th, uh, 2022. Um, I, I just want to thank Jen. She has been a um, Jen has been an amazing employee. Um, I just a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, wrote, wrote a nice note to her about you know the performance that she did in the job. Um, just making little things that people don't think about, but making somebody's wedding day happen because you know towns all around won't deal with it because of COVID or whatever it might be. And she she would step up and um, and was trained to take care of people, uh, regardless if they were Deerfield right. people or not, she would step up and made a difference to make um, their special day possible when they tried all over to get something to happen. And those are, that's just one small example of all the, you know, the smile that she had on her face when she dealt with our, our people. And she's always, always did a good job and um, we'll miss her terribly. So that's. So. I, I was just going to say it, you know, it's, she was always very polite, very patient, very, you know, thoughtful. Mm -hmm. and, her, and working with you know townspeople and she stepped up when it was very difficult here i know it was not a position she wanted got hired for or wanted to do but just you know she stepped up and did what she needed to do for for the time that she could so and she's making a choice to to pursue other avenues that you know which are the there, there comes a point in your life where you take a good hard look at what you're doing and you think about where you might, might want to be. And so, you know, I give her credit. Yeah, absolutely. Keep but it. she's an amazing employee and we are going to miss her. Yep. I hope, I hope she enjoyed her time here. So, yeah. Yep. When I saw this email, um, when I arrived in Dublin on October 4th, uh, I, you know, I immediately fired off an email back to her saying, you know, how much we were going to miss her and, and everything that she's done for the town. So, um she's definitely gonna be missed yep do we need a motion or anything like that okay i make the motion. motion and i'll second it um all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn Ness, aye. all right thank you very much jen um so we've got that done you have uh let's see so unanticipated we have a senator comerford's earmark contract for review and approval? Yeah, so let me back this up a bit. So we got the contract for the $100,000 earmark that Joe Comerford very kindly pursued on behalf of all three towns, Sunderland, Wheatley, and Deerfield. Yep. Um, there needs to be some conversation with the BOO, and we've had a series, the town administrators and Jennifer Remillard and I have had a series of emails trying to schedule a meeting. So initially I thought they were, I think they're still having a meeting on the 1st of November. You guys have a meeting on the 2nd. I'm gonna confirm that, but if they are having a meeting on the 1st, would you be willing as a board to go to that meeting and sort of discuss some of this? Because yeah. I think there's questions in the other towns about how this earmark would be used. Yep, fairly, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I just, I. What sent time? an email out earlier and then I went back and thought, all right, I'm just going to ask it at the meeting because then it gives me a framework to say yes or no, we could do this or can we schedule something else? Um, what time, Casey? I think it's at six. Oh, okay. But I will confirm with you guys. So that's a Tuesday. And is it remote? I think it's either hybrid or remote. They have been doing remote meetings, so I'm thinking it's remote, but Alex might know. Yeah, it's usually remote. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you guys can do that, we're going to post a meeting okay. and we'll have to see. I don't know if Sunderland can go to that meeting. Right. Yeah. Just let us know. If, now, if it's a, if it's the second, you guys have a meeting, so you can't go. Right. <laughs> so I will let you know. And that brings me to the other thing I was going to ask. So DOT would like to meet with you. Remember, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. Yes. 
I wasn't, Mar Matt Minahan hadn't gotten in touch with me and then vice versa. I got an email from one of his colleagues while I was gone on Thursday, last Thursday. So are there dates and times you guys could commit to, to yes. go down to DOT? And maybe if we pull together like three dates and times, we could see what they could do. Yes. Yep. You just know what? Make it happen and I'll Make, be there. Yeah. So do you want to try, remember we did Fridays the last time. Do you want to try a couple, sure. putting out a couple Fridays? Sure. Um, the only Friday I'm, I'm not available is um, I'm, I have Friday, November 4th is um, all day is the MSA nominating committee for that I'm doing for the MMA. Yeah, and Veterans Day is the 11th, right. the 11th. So maybe the 18th is the 25th, nobody's doing anything. No, I'm not doing it. Or if it needs to be in December, you know. Okay. I don't know if we'll be able to get it in October. We've got a lot of stuff ahead of us yeah, exactly. before town meeting. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to manage all that. Um, maybe, See, we could do could you guys do the 28th? Um, I could throw it out there. Yeah, I mean, of November or October? October. No. Oh yeah, no, I'm avail I'm available the 28th. We would have to post. So I'll throw a couple dates out there. I will blind carbon copy you, so you can only reply to me. But we'll see what they say. I just wanted to to ask you when you were all in the same room. Okay, sounds great. Yeah. All right, so I'll try the 28th and a couple of other dates. Okay. I, I have a couple unanticipated items. Um, we had, I got, I'm trying to catch up on my email and one of the emails that was in my box was, um, DOT refused to let us put the birthday, 350th birthday cake next to the, um, fire station, South Deerfield fire, fire station, because it's on, um, property of, you know, their layout, road laid out. And I had a John York was very nice. He went out and actually measured it. And it will be a few feet, even if we move it, there's nothing we can do. We can't, it can't be placed 100% on anything that's our property. It, have, it will have some overlay. So if Tim and Trevor are okay, I would like to um, approach Joe Cumberford and Nellie Blay and make sure that DOT gets some pressure for, I mean, it's a temporary celebration cake. I mean, it's ridiculous to be denied because they don't want anything on their layout. It's way far away from the road. But um, just in case that doesn't pan out, Peter Thomas- um, I saw him staking out there. Staking out, out here by the um, 1888 building. So I just wanted you and Tim to look at it and see what you thought. Because we had to have some other alternative. I've thought of rural lot, but the layout there goes back. And I, so the cape would be, yeah. We wouldn't even be able to see it. So what lot? Um, the rural lot at the end of North Main. Street. Oh, at the end of North Main Street. Yeah, Carolyn, did you call Kevin? Uh, for maybe he one. had a he would have a good suggestion. Well, uh, yeah, uh, no, I just found I was talking to Peter today, and you I know, saw him out there staking and, stuff tonight. So. Yeah, and they we were going back and forth today, so pain well, in we the can neck. Shut off the yeah. uh, the fountain and stick it on top of the commons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then the other thing is, um, the, I found out the state commission meeting that normally meets this Thursday has been postponed because of quorum issues till November 3rd. And Alex and I had set up a meeting at 10 o'clock for this air monitoring stuff. And I just, in case either one of you wanted to go, Alex has come up with some spots for this, you know, the stuff. And I, I won't be able to go. So in yeah. case one of you... Oh, uh, should I should I show a little map of, yeah, of where we're going to plus it in case they felt necessary, you know, to go. Yeah. This is the air monitoring up and down the route five and ten quarter. We were concerned about for what the, the train. The train. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, along the um, the trains um, in right. in 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 between the the I ninety corridor. And basically all it is is just looking at the particulate matter 2.5 and just looking at the air quality in Deerfield. Um, and that's it, just uh, uh, informational um, uh, data for the residents. And uh, this, is, this is through the Pioneer Valley Air Monitoring Network. And basically it's um, a program where um, it's, it's 
free and basically uh, you just uh, hook it up uh, to uh, a Wi-Fi uh, place and um, and um, you just let it rip. Yeah, yeah it's no, we had no talked effort, about no it. cost. No cost. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not going to give us any power to do anything, but it will give us a little bit of information. Okay. We yeah. have so many complaints over the years when we have the air inversions, especially in the spring, in the fall, you know, like by the walk area down, you know, it's there. So you, you can, when you look at it, stand on my porch and you look down, you can, where the fog is hanging, you know that you have an air inversion. I know I'm going to get a complaint or whatever. And so the idea is to, what is really the complaint? You know, what, is it, is it something that we should be worrying about or, you know, it will give us some documentation. That's all. And, and it, other communities are participating. So if we set up wind turbines, will it blow away? <laughs> Um, and um, then the, just one other thing, I, I, I'm really pleased that Kate yes. Devlin from the that was nice Conservation Commission participated in the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commission training programs and yep. actually completed it. That's great. It's, it's really wonderful. So I just want to say yep. thank you to thank Kate. Thank you very much, Kate. Yeah. So that was it. All right. And then uh, there was, it looks like there were some DOT notices uh, yep. in the mail about um, regulatory stuff. So Berkshire Gas is filing a um, notice of filing and public hearing for um, energy efficiency. And then the other item was the, um, oh, it was the information on the dams, I think came out. Yep. Uh, so I read, read through that. So. And then, shared streets and spaces notice to proceed you want to yes get on that we finally got it we've been waiting for many months <laughs> Woo -hoo. nice thank you so much that's why i wrote it in i'm like i can't let this one go you guys have to see this <laughs> thank you it's, it's 113,118 dollars so that's awesome so there's some we'll have to start it this is another project um we'll have to get going on engineering and stuff yep okay there'll be a uh a, we got a um a request for a um sewer abatement uh there was a faulty um we'll see that at the next meeting we'll see it at the next meeting but um and i do have a question about the 1888 design services contract so um oh, okay the OPM was working on that with Julie. I haven't, I, I sent Dan an email and I asked him, Dan Pilata, I asked him for it. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. So we can do this one of two ways. We can ask you guys to address it at the next meeting, possibly retroactively, um, or you guys can consider having me be the authorized signatory on it so we can execute and get moving on it. It's up to you. I don't care. I actually have it on the 19th as a discussion item. Okay. Is there a rush? Oh, Julie has a comment. <laughs> hand up. Just a quick comment. There was a cap in the RFQ. So there is an upper limit on right. the dollar value. Right. Okay. So yeah. what they did is it to be negotiated up to, right, Julie? Okay. Was it 175, Julie? Do you remember? Ah. Uh, I, I'm remembering 180, but I I'm, yeah, that could be correct. I'm <laughs> reluctant to say a dollar value without reading right. the Below thing again. Below 200,000, I believe. It was yeah. We have a similar memory, so that's good. Do you need Do you need a vote now, or do you? It's oh, I just want to know what you guys want to do. Do you want to deal with it next week? Like I said, possibly retroactively. So the date effective date, I would ask you to make a certain determination on that, or do you want me to take care of it? Uh, I'm, I'm fine if you take care of it. Yeah. So I would prefer you actually do a motion for that. I'll make uh -huh. a motion to authorize Casey Warren to um, sign uh, the agreement that's being worked on. And I'll second for, that. For the 1888 building. Okay. Any further discussion or comments? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Curl in that sign. Great. Um, Casey, can you just do a tickler for mid-December? 
um, to follow up on these uh, DM um, comments and make sure that all the corrections are done. This for is the DPU notice for the notice we got. Yeah, because this is actually more than we than I've ever seen. Yeah, there's some stuff there um, to deal with. So I, I want to make sure this is so many. I mean, and it's at each dam. It's at the Sherman, right. the Harriman, and the Somerset. So I, I want to make sure that those get done. Okay. So what do you, in terms of a tickler, Carolyn, what do you want? Well, just follow up with FERC. Just send a letter confirming that all um, the suggested um, items below have been taken care of. They're, they're mandatory to get fixed within 60 days. So by December, they should have been fixed. Did they send out another notice whether they've been fixed no. or not? No. No. That's, That's why I want a tickler and a follow up because these are actually, there's, you know, quite a few here actually. And and this is this is not acceptable. Okay. So let's see. Okay. All right, so then um, do we have anything else other than we've got the Can I ask a couple of questions? Do you guys want to go to the MMA conference? This is really for Tim. I know Carolyn and Trevor probably do. I'm signed up. I already got my hotel. Yeah, Trevor's signed up. I've actually asked um, Chris Nolan, our soon-to-be assistant town administrator. I sent him an email this morning and asked him if he wanted to go. I would prefer if he went. Yeah. Um, he needs to get sort of a feeling for how the MMA conference can be helpful to everyone. Yep. Um, and he hasn't been to one. So I will work with him when he gets here to sign up for that. And Pat's aware. Pat usually coordinates a lot of this. So she's aware that I'm asking you guys tonight about this. Tim, if you want to indicate to me whether you and Pat would like to go, um, you're Pat. Um, mm -hmm. That would be great because what we do is we we make the reservations, we sign up for the we do the registration with MMA and reservations for the hotel. You just give us an idea. Usually it's Thursday night to Saturday. Right. And just check in and we'll process that. Carolyn, you'll need to let us know um, who you might be, who we need to let MMA know you're bringing. OK, um so. I just want it out there because now we're getting we we need to if we're going to do reservations for hotels we should do them as soon as we can. Yeah. Can um, you yeah, sign me up, Casey. Okay. The and only the only thing extra that I do is I do the Wemo. The yeah. Wemo, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we got to make sure that we go to that uh, MIIA. So that's another reason I want Chris to go because he and I can do right. some of those short courses so that we can get Maya credits. Absolutely. Right. right. Yeah. It's so. part of our budget now that we have to, so we get maximum, you know, yeah. right. credits. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's one other thing. So remember the Maya risk, risk grants, Carolyn? Yep. We actually need to use one of those grants for some safety things up at the transfer station. And I just wanted to let you all know, um, Jan and Kevin and I have been discussing it. There was some, she did her inspection and there's several towns that need to do this. And normally we try to use it for various things. Sometimes the police department needs something. Sometimes um, public works needs something. In this case, we need you have an up to ten thousand dollar limit for this grant it comes from maya tim our insurance company we need it to make some changes for safety up at the transfer station for access so i just want to let everybody know that that's probably what kevin and i are going to end up doing okay that's fine that's and fine. what happens tim is when we take the classes for these credits this helps us get to a higher limit on our grants <laughs> I know. Well, well, I mean, honestly, it's good information. It's very good information. Oh, so I, stuff. you know, I mean, we do do it for money, but um, yeah, we also awesome. gives us credits on our insurance, so we don't have to pay quite so much. It's good. Yep. It's good to um, be informed. Okay, Is that it. Thank you all. Motion to adjourn. I'll make, I'll make a motion, motion to adjourn. Oh man, you beat me you all second. <laughs> all right. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Great. Thank you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks for. Hey, Rocky.